Hello everyone, in this video we're going to have a quick introduction on universal profiles and the LSPs and what's possible to build with them. LSPs stand for Luxus Standard Proposals and it's similar to the EIPs and ERCs we have in the Ethereum ecosystem, just separated to have a more quiet and less biased space of discussion. The LSPs aim to solve a specific problem or to standardize a mechanism related to a specific topic, similar to the EIPs and ERCs, and one of the most famous ERCs is ERC20. So ERC20 standardizes how a fungible asset should be represented and how it can be traded and transferred between addresses. We have ERC721, which is similar to ERC20 but represents the non-fungible version, and we have other ERCs like 4337 that standardize decentralized transaction relayers and hundreds of other EIPs that solve different problems. So after using these standards, it was obvious that some of them have limitation and needs to be rediscussed. Unfortunately, on the Ethereum ecosystem, it's not happening a lot, but this is what we're trying to achieve with the LSPs on Luxo. We can start by an example on the ERC standard. So within the ERC20 standard, there is no way to attach generic metadata to the contract. You're only limited to the name and the symbol within these two functions. So for example, there is no way to reference a link for the token image or a description or even reference the address of the creator or the community behind it. This represents a big problem as it leaves the option for websites and Explorer to use their own information on the token, such as an image and description without a unified source of truth. Other than that, we have another problem of interactivity. For example, once you do a NERC20 token transfer, what happened under the hood is that the sender called the transfer function and the token contract decreased the balance of the sender and increased the balance of the recipient. The recipient will be completely excluded from this interaction so first it won't be notified and second it won't have the ability to react on it and uh, do specific actions there is uh, several other problems related to the security of the transfer and ability to batch them and batch authorization but we won't talk about each individual problem but all of them are solved with LSP7 and LSP8, LSP7 being the standard for fungible assets, similar to ERC20, and LSP8 being the standard that represents the non-fungible token standard, similar to ERC721 and 1155. To solve the problem of the metadata, LSP7 and LSP8 comply to the LSP4 standard, which standardizes that both standards should implement ERC721. ERC725Y, a standard that allowed to add generic information to the contract even after deployment. So for instance, LSP4 standardized that you can reference the token name, the token symbol, the token type, whether it's a token or NFT or a collection, and even an array of creators. So within the token contract, there could be an optional reference to the creators which make the asset more authentic and can be verified while trading it or showing it on an interface. Other than that, we have the LSP4 metadata JSON, which we don't have in ERC20, for example, and this LSP4 metadata key uh, reference a JSON file describing the digital asset. So for example, we have this JSON. It has a specific structure for a description and for icons, for a link, images of different sizes and different attributes. So if we go, for example, to Etherscan and we take the example of, um, of ENS, ENS being an ERC20 token, um, this one, uh, we see here that there is a token image and we see that there is a link. And if we go to the same address, but on Block Scout, which is a different entity, we see that it's the same address, and we see that it's the same token name, but with the same, obviously, token symbol, but we don't see the image or even a link, because both are showing the same address, but there is no unified source of truth on the blockchain that reference either the image or the links. But if we compare it with LSP7, we can go here and see the chill token, which is an LSP7, and we can see there is a token image, there is a description, there is uh, some uh, icons and images, we have links and different attributes. Uh, and if we go to universal page, which is a different entity, we can see that it has the same image, same description, and even same links. Both being different entities, and being able to show the same description and same information 
mean that this description or all the information about the token are referenced on the blockchain and no interface is um, is showing inaccurate information. So both of these information here and there are the same and both are retrieved from the blockchain. If we go to LSP1 and check again this problem of interactivity, we can see it here again and we can see how LSP7 and LSP8 solve this problem. So we talked about ERC20, how after a transfer, the balance of the sender is decreased and the balance of the recipient is increased and the recipient is excluded from the interaction. What happens with LSP7 and LSP8 is that aside from the transfer and the decreasing of the balance of the sender and increasing the balance of the recipient, the token contract will inform the recipient and also inform the sender. This will allow first that the recipient is informed about the, about the transfer and second, it can react on it. So the recipient can either decide to reject the transfer or only allow uh, accepting token transfer from a whitelisted registry or even could uh, could have the ability to send the spam tokens to a vault that he owns. So all of this interactivity is possible as LSP7 and LSP8 notify the sender and the recipient based on the LSP1 universal receiver standard. And if we go to the LSP1 and check the rationale behind it, we can see that some of the ERCs support informing the recipient as an optional function, but also come with a bad design decision where each standard creates a new function to notify. So we have on ERC721 received to notify about ERC721 transfer, on ERC1155 received to notify about ERC1155 transfer, and tokens received to notify about ERC777 transfer. So this is a bad design decision as whenever a new standard emerge in the future, for example, let's say ERC 9000, people need to either add a new function, which is on ERC 9000 received and add a new handling for it, or deploy a new contract if their contract is immutable. And this could be a huge problem as the contract could contain all of the tokens they own and even the reputation that they gained over the years. So. LSP1 standardizes a unified function called Universal Receiver and it takes an identifier and data field. The identifier should represent whether it's a transfer of a token or an NFT or any other action that the user can be notified about and the data should be relevant based on the type ID. So if it's a token transfer, you may send with the data the uh, address of the sender and the address of the recipient and the amount being sent. And if it's an NFT transfer, you can replace the amount with the token ID being sent. So the recipient have the full context of what he is being notified about. So having one unified function makes it a universal way of informing for all the action that a user can be notified about, whether it's a token transfer, followers, royalty, or even any action related to a standard that may come in the future. So in this way, we have a universal way of informing without making the user deploy a new contract with the new functions whenever a new standard emerge. And this way, users not just are notified, but also can react on the action they are being informed about. So either by hard coding the logic within the universal receiver function, or by delegating the logic to a contract that we call universal receiver delegate, and this contract can be either changed or removed. So we can see here that you can have different universal receiver delegates with different logic. You may decide to at first use the universal receiver delegate that revert on all the tokens that you receive. In this way, you can reject any token or then later change to a universal receiver delegate that forward the token that you receive to a vault that you own. And we have seen a project from the community that leverages universal receiver delegates in this way you whenever you receive a new token it gets forwarded automatically to a grave and then you decide whether you want to revive this token and send it back to your profile or not so the idea of this standard is to have this function implemented somewhere where you'll be able to receive tokens and nfts and being notified about different actions and one of the main use cases of this standard is being implemented in an account but an account isn't just about the interactivity an account is all about security, flexibility, being representative, all of these which are lacking in the tools and infrastructure we use currently as account. So the first thing that people do once they want to start using crypto 
is that they install MetaMask and create an account. This account representation is just a pair of public and private key, which is the most basic tool that the blockchain provides you with. It allows you to interact with other contracts and deploy them, and that's it. For instance, the first problem is that every time you need to interact with a contract or a function in a different contract is that you need to pay for a network fee. And getting the token with which you pay for the network fee could be a very long and hard process as it involves going to exchanges, doing KYC, and a lot of actions that take time. So this is the first problem. The second problem is the representation of the account. So if we go here, we can see that the information that we can retrieve about this account is just the address, his balance, and how many transactions he did over the time. So we cannot see a name or a profile picture or some links to Instagram or a Twitter account, nothing. As this account doesn't allow to attach any kind of information and do some complex interaction. The third problem is that the security of this account is very weak. For instance, this address is backed by a private key, something like a password. And if this password gets leaked or lost, there is no notion of recovering your password and it's gone forever. And if it gets leaked, there is no notion of changing the password as, it, as it's directly tied to the account. So if it gets leaked or lost, it's the end for the account holder. The account which holds his token and his reputation is forever compromised. So this is problematic for normal users, but could be even more dangerous for brands and influencers that build their reputation over the years. All of these problems are due to the use of externally owned account as accounts, and that's why we have universal profiles. A universal profile is a combination of many standards, the main one being LSP0, which represent the actual account. And it's called LSP0 ERC-725 account because it uses ERC-725 as basis. So the LSP0 is the main standard. It supports a lot of substandards like ERC-725X, ERC-165, ERC-1271 for signature validation, uh, and different other standards. So we have, we already talked about ERC-725Y, which is the generic key value store that allow you to write anything to the contract. And we can see it here. If we go to this profile, we can see that it's representative. If we cancel this transaction and see this wallet, we can see that I have a profile picture, I have a background image, I have a description and even a Twitter link. So all of this is reference on the blockchain because even if I change the platform, if I go to universal page, I can see the same images and the same description and the same links. That means that this information is retrieved from the blockchain. And even if we talked about the asset, we have a specific standard called LSP5 received assets that says that you can register the addresses of the asset within the within your profile so erc 725y is not just about writing a description or writing a metadata for like a token or uh, a profile it's it can reference anything that you want and here we use it for assets in this way you don't need an external api that fetch the whole blockchain and index it to know what asset you own but rather you go to the specific profile and retrieve the addresses of the asset and then you can parse them like this. So LSP0 contain a lot of feature and support many standard that makes it the best smart contract account to use in the ecosystem. We can see here the list of standard that are supported. And if we go quickly to each one, we can see that it support ERC-725X, meaning you can do a normal call within your account, you, you can do the operation create, and even you can do create two, which is not available if you use your externally owned account, and you can do delegate call and static call, which is more which is more advanced operation. We have ERC-725Y, we already talked about this standard and its use cases to reference the metadata of the, uh, of the profile and even uh, reference the addresses of the assets you own and even it could be extended to be used to reference the addresses of the vaults you own. We have LSP1 universal receiver, we talked about this standard and we know that the best implementation and use case of this standard is being in an account as 
the account is the best contract to notify so you can notify the contract about different stuff about token transfer about followers about royalties and the and the profile or the account can respond in different way using the universal receiver delegate we have lsp14 ownable to step which standardize how the account should be owned and what's the process of transferring ownership which is a secure ownership mechanism lsp17 contract extension that standardize how to add more functionality to the uh, to the contract even after deployment so you're not just tied with the function that uh, are built in within the account but you can attach more functions even after deployment and we have lsp20 call verification which is a standard that operate under the hood to make the interaction with the account more simple and uh, less complex when you own this contract with a uh, different combination like a key manager or a multisig and we're gonna talk about this now so lsp0 is a powerful account on its own but what it makes it unique and more flexible than the other smart contract accounts is that it has upgradable security meaning the account can be owned by all sorts of contracts that have different levels of security so it can be owned by a multisig which make the account require several signature to execute or you can own it with a key manager which we currently have standardized as lsp6 and the key manager allows you to grant permission to different addresses for instance if we go here to my profile you can see that my browser extension controller has specific permission for example profile data permission to edit my profile data, sign, decrypt, encrypt, and other interaction permission, and some of the administration permission. And if we check another controller, which is my Gnosis Safe, we can see that it has full permission all over my profile. And even, for example, I can add permission to a social recovery contract, which is being also standardized now as LSP11. In this way, even if I lose access to my controllers, I can go to this contract and recover my account with the help of guardians and then I'll have the access back to my account. So this represents a new way in account management in the Web3 space. So for instance, this is, not, this is now not possible as the account is represented by an externally owned account and whenever you give access to the private key controlling this externally owned account, you're giving control all over the account assets and reputation and what it can do. However, now with this permission system, brands and influencers can split roles and give different permission to different users. For instance, you can give the designer or the media manager the access to change profile data and you can have the accountant which have access to, you can grant it to have access to specific vaults and the ledger that the CEO owns that have the ability to modify all the permissions and add and remove users. And not just that, the key managers support LSP25, which is a standard for meta transaction, which allow users to interact on the blockchain without having to pay for the network fees. It works by signing um, a message and delegating it to other relayers that take care of submitting the transaction and paying the network fee. So also I can do it here now. So if I go ahead and try to edit my profile i can add the tags for example developer and try to save you can see here that there is no notion of lyx which is the native token to the network i'm not paying any uh, network fee but there is a relayer that i'm subscribed to and it's um and it's decreasing my quota. So I can go ahead and do a transaction. And you can see here that I have changed my profile information without having to pay for the network fee. And you can see here that it, it's executed through the universal relayer mainnet. So it's, it's done through a transaction relay services and not through paying uh, a network fee. So the possibilities are endless with the LSPs. There is innovation on the asset side, also on the profile and the management side. A lot of things can be built, for example, custom built dashboard for brands and influencers and even for DAOs. And these custom dashboards can use under the hood the universal profile and the key manager permission system. 
So as a brand, I can go to this website dedicated to launch brand infrastructure and set up my brand with few clicks and we can have the same thing happening for DAOs. You can build and innovate as well around the assets and the notification side. So you can board existing protocols, but adjust them to use the LSPs. And we have seen that with several other projects where the user experience was even enhanced after using the new standards. So the best resource for developers looking to understand and build with the LSPs is docs.luxo.tech, this website that I'm showing now. You can see that we did all of this demo using a tiny bit of the content available here. And there is a specific section about the network, about the tools that we have, and even some section uh, regarding uh, guides and tutorials. And if you have any question, please join our Discord server and ask the question in the dedicated channel.